Though there's never been such a high volume of incredible TV for audiences to binge themselves on, starting any new series comes with the inevitable anxiety that it could be cancelled after just a couple of seasons, if it even makes it that far. As such, while the numbers might make sense to the bean counters to fans of these following shows, their cancellations were intensely frustrating. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 TV shows that were infuriatingly cancelled in 2021. Number 10, Lovecraft Country. We'll kick things off with one that really stings. HBO's horror drama series Lovecraft Country was at once a searing travelogue of America's torrid past and a genuinely mesmerizing example of Lovecraftian lore done right. Season 1 premiered in the summer of 2020, and alongside strong praise for the writing, direction, and performances, it scored 18 Emmy nominations last July. Yet mere days before the noms were announced, HBO suddenly cancelled the show, despite the fact that a second season, Lovecraft Country Supremacy, was already in development. Though the first season mercifully ended in a relatively satisfying fashion, fans were understandably heartbroken that one of 2020's most artful and creative new shows was getting the chop before it even had time to build an audience. For his part, HBO Chief Content Officer Casey Bloys blamed the cancellation on a quote, confluence of factors, saying, It has to be something we think makes sense for us. In this case, we couldn't get there. I don't think it would be fair to point at anyone or any one particular thing. Other reports, however, claim that HBO killed the show due to a toxic toxic working environment created by the showrunner, but whatever the reason, an incredibly promising show got the premature axe. Number 9, AP Bio. The delightfully weird Glenn Howerton starring sitcom AP Bio got off to a fairly shaky start with 2018's first season, but enjoyed a massive uptick in quality from that point on. Sadly, the ratings dwindled regardless during season 2, and NBC cancelled the show before the second run even finished airing. However, less than two months later, NBC reversed their decision and saved the show, moving it from their TV network to streaming service Peacock for its third run. A fourth season also premiered last September, but in December, Peacock confirmed that the show had again been cancelled and seemingly for keeps this time. This is a bittersweet one, because it's so incredibly rare that a cancelled show gets uncancelled even once, especially by the same network and so quickly. As such, it's important to be grateful that it was given a two-year lease on life. But at the same time, this one felt like it still had plenty left in the tank and still feels disappointing. Number 8, Why the Last Man Oh, why the last man, we hardly knew ye. This long gestating adaptation of the beloved post-apocalyptic comic book series of the same name finally debuted last September, and reviews were firmly polarized out of the gate, with many lauding its performances and atmosphere while others criticized its heavy-handed writing. It certainly seemed like a show that could have found its feet if given the chance to react to fans, but sadly, it never got the chance. In a move just about nobody saw coming, FX on Hulu cancelled the show after just seven episodes of its first season had aired. The decision was made primarily for budgetary reasons, as the showrunner and cast changes as well as additional pandemic-related costs caused the per-episode price tag to balloon to levels deemed unsustainable. Showrunner Eliza Clark did attempt to shop the series to other networks, and it seemed quite plausible for a time that it would live on somewhere else, but Clark recently confirmed that the show was indeed dead for good, saying, quote, For those of you who have been asking me, we tried really hard to get another platform to pick up season 2 of Y, but sadly it doesn't look like it's going to happen. It is always incredibly difficult to move a show, and in recent years, it has only gotten harder. Number 7, Cursed. Now, it wouldn't be outrageous to maybe suggest that there's maybe a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy going on with many Netflix shows, whereby fans are anxious to start watching a new series in case the cancel-happy streamer decides to kill it after just a season or two. But without taking a chance on interesting-looking shows while they're still alive, it only sends the message to Netflix that the audience isn't much interested. The Catherine Langford starring Curse, a daring reimagining of Arthurian legend, premiered to broadly positive reviews in 2020, with critics citing its clever reinvention of a classic text and Langford's steely central performance. But last July, Netflix quietly announced that Cursed wouldn't be returning for the expected second season, and without them explaining why, it's fair to assume that it was likely due to underwhelming viewing figures. Even so, the show was well made and compelling enough to surely merit Netflix rolling the dice in a second season, unless, of course, the ratings really were that bad. Number 6, Good Girls. 
Crime comedy series Good Girls is another promising show that didn't quite hit the ground running, but thanks to its electric chemistry of charming leads Christina Hendricks, Retta, and Mae Whitman, it enjoyed a strong uptick in quality from season 2 onwards. But in a bout of sad irony, the ratings were never higher than in that first hit and miss season, and by the end of season 4, its ratings were often just a fraction of season 1's. As such, it wasn't really surprising to anyone paying attention when NBC cancelled the show at the end of season 4. The network initially planned to produce a shortened fifth and final season to give fans closure, but the financials just didn't come together and a last ditch bid to shop it to Netflix devastatingly fell apart. There were also rumours about creative issues playing upon NBC's decision to cut Good Girls loose, but it's kind of unclear at the moment. All we do know though is that it's especially painful as while the show's TV ratings were in decline, it was a consistently high performer on Netflix and so the streamer would have ultimately been the perfect home for it. Number 5, American Gods The hugely anticipated adaptation of Neil Gaiman's 2001 fantasy novel American Gods was lauded right out of the gate for its ambitious storytelling, eye-wateringly impressive visuals and strong performances, but it wasn't long before behind the scenes issues began to impact its quality. That's because season 1's showrunners Brian Fuller and Michael Green were fired during pre-production of season 2 and were replaced with Jesse Alexander and Gaiman himself, only for Alexander to be removed a few months later. Season 2 was then overseen by producing director Chris Byrne and line producer Lisa Kusner without having an official showrunner, and season 3 saw Charles E. Glee take the reins. Unsurprisingly, the show's quality demonstrably declined amid these personnel changes, but it seemed to regain steadier footing throughout season 3. Sadly, it was too little too late, as American Gods was cancelled barely a week after its third season wrapped up, with plummeting ratings and production issues being cited as the prevailing reasons. Gaiman, for his part, hoped to shop the show to other networks or wrap it up with a feature-length event film, but given the abject headache of its creation, it doesn't seem terribly likely. For a show that was so creative and unique at its peak, it is a shame that it wasn't given more time to win back those fans it might have lost in season 2. Number 4, Truth Seekers It truly seemed like a horror comedy series co-written and co-starring Nick Frost and Simon Pegg simply couldn't miss, and yet, despite scoring solid reviews from critics, Amazon's Truth Seekers never made it past one season. Last February, Frost announced on social media that the show wouldn't be returning for season 2, a decision he quite aptly called a massive kick in the willy. Frost didn't elaborate on the reasons for the cancellation, though considering the sadness he expressed at it not returning, it was almost certainly a result of lower than expected viewing figures. Considering the solid marketing might Amazon put behind the series and the obvious appeal of seeing Frost and Peg back together again, it is surprising that it wasn't more of a rating success. With its winning combination of ominous mystery, offbeat humour and game performances, Truth Seekers clearly had a lot more left to give, but alas, it wasn't meant to be. Number 3, The Twilight Zone Look, the Jordan Peele and Simon Kinberg fronted Twilight Zone revival clearly wasn't the home run that fans hoped it would be, but its second season, released in June 2020, felt like it took heed of the first season's pitfalls and suggested a third volume might improve further still. Last February, however, the show was cancelled outright, though surprisingly enough, it wasn't CBS slash Paramount Plus that initiated the cancellation due to the show's large budget and expectedly middling viewing figures. Instead, both Peele and Kinberg's production companies decided to depart despite CBS and Paramount actually hoping they would commit to more episodes. Given that this was the third revival of the legendary mystery anthology series though, it's probably fair to assume that Paramount will end up rebooting it yet again within the next decade. And at least streaming isn't leaving fans of thriller anthologies wanting for content, what with Black Mirror, Electric Dreams, Inside Number 9 and so on, filling the off-kilter void. Number 2, Cowboy Bebop. Now, there's definitely a section of the audience out there who couldn't wait to see the back of Cowboy Bebop, and yet, sure, Netflix live-action series wasn't great, but driven by its fun and enthusiastic central cast, it did have the potential to grow and evolve into something better. In one of the most embarrassingly blatant votes of no confidence in recent TV history, though, the streaming platform cancelled the series less than three weeks after its premiere. Mixed reviews would have ultimately meant nothing had the show pulled the requisite ratings, but with Netflix now publishing a weekly top 10 stats dump, it's clear that viewership fell off a cliff in its second week and never recovered, with audiences abandoning the show in droves before even finishing it. And it is a shame when you consider just how much effort had been exerted to finally get it before cameras, and it felt like it deserved a second season to try and tidy things up. But the numbers evidently don't lie, and if Netflix was willing to cancel it less than a month after it debuted, the viewer drop-off must have been historically poor. Number 1, The Duchess 
It's at least easy to understand why Netflix cancelled The Duchess. They sent the Catherine Ryan starring sitcom series out to die with barely any marketing at all, even for their standards, and so it unsurprisingly failed to make a dent with audiences. Despite the comedian's popularity and the evidently low cost of production compared to the streamer's other shows, it was given the axe last April, apparently due to low ratings according to Ryan herself who said, quote, Netflix didn't want to make any more, not enough people watched it. I think something like 10 million people watched it in 28 days and that wasn't enough, but also I'm not terribly sad about it. I feel like it's a whole lot of work, a whole lot of time to make a sitcom. I was so grateful to be able to make it, but I think it speaks for itself. I kind of like the way it ended. More Catherine Ryan on our screens is always a good thing, so it's a damn shame that Netflix didn't take a punt on one more season at least. So that's our list. I want to what you guys think down in the comments below. What do you think about the cancellation of these shows? And are there any ones I missed that you're absolutely gutted about? While you're down there as well, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't thought I've been Josh, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.